Well, Operation Ghost fans, seems we're back for more. I have traveled down to South Carolina, Hilton Head, and we're going to be investigating the Stony Banner Plantation House. So it was a pretty interesting house. It was actually built with uh, oysters, lime, and sand. And a Revolutionary War hero, Captain Jack Stoney, is actually the original builder of the house. Um, it's not, eventually it's switched over to William Baynard, and there's some speculation on how Captain Jack actually lost that house. Um, some speculated that maybe he lost a game of poker, and then some even speculated that he just went bankrupt. But basically, William Baynard was a um, cotton farmer, which hence why he had the slaves there. So there's slave houses. Um, after, so after William Baynard died, the Union soldiers during the Civil War, they, they actually housed themselves there. That was a place that they stayed. And then the plantation burnt down shortly after. But you can see pretty clearly where all the houses were, and, and there's still some good structure there. Now, it's said to this day, you can still see William Baynard walking around there. Um, I actually did go there um, some years back, and I definitely got a really eerie feeling being there. It was just before a storm, and it was starting to get dark, and you could definitely tell that there was some energy in the air. And we're going to head down there. The park stays open until 8 o'clock, but as usual, I am all about trying to get a little extra nighttime investigating in. Now, essentially what I'm going to be attempting while I am doing this is I'm going to try to go a little bit later, probably around five or six, try to do a little bit of day into night. Um, Cause the park closes at eight and I'm hoping that we, will, that we will mostly have the whole park to ourselves. So I don't get a lot of interference, people walking around. Um, you know, I'm gonna use all the basic stuff I usually use, my ghost box, EMF, EVP, and I do have my full spectrum cameras. Um, I do have my single picture camera that's full spectrum, and that's usually my favorite instrument I use. And, you know, I guess we're going to see what happens. The last time I went, I had zero equipment. I didn't have anything. I just walked around, and I walked around a lot by myself. And like I said, there was a storm coming on, and I could definitely feel some electricity in the air. And I definitely got a sense of a certain energy that was in the area. I'm not really sure what I was expecting at this point. I think I was a little nervous I wasn't going to capture anything. And although I didn't get a whole lot of visuals, this is one of the only investigations where I felt something enter my body. And it really affected me a little bit after this. Alright, well we're about to step off for this investigation. You know, you can't have an investigation without the beast, you know. It's very important that every ghost hunter ever knows, you know. You can't you can't investigate ghosts, paranormal sightings, without having you like a V8 Hemi type vehicle to get you through the stuff, you know. But we're gonna head on over there and get us some ghosts. Riding through this fairly rich vacation area, I highly doubt most of the residents here have any idea what's lurking not too far from their doors. Well, I just arrived here at the park. You just have to go up. Looks like there's some construction across the road, but there's nobody there, and it looks like there's nobody here at the park as of now. So that should keep us from having any interference in our investigation. Walking up these stairs, this place was seemingly peaceful and innocent. But in the back of my mind, I knew there was more to this place than that. What exactly is waiting for me here? One of my favorite uses of equipment is always my EMF reader. You know, and in this case, there's no wires in here. I don't see any light systems, so there should be no electricity in here. So if this thing starts going off, going into the red or even the yellow, that would be definitely pretty strange. While I'm running the other full spectrum camera, I'm going to be doing a ghost box session. I'm going to set this EMF reader on top of part of the ruins. And I'm going to be right here next to the house. I'm not supposed to go past this gate. So I try to do my best to respect all the rules of the park.
William Baynard. Would you like to communicate? You had bought this house and you had died here. I spent a good amount of time trying to make good communication, but ultimately I was unsuccessful. The only real strange thing that happened with the ghost box was I had charged it fully the night before and it seemed to almost die immediately after less than 20 minutes of use. Is it possible a spirit sucked the power out of it? At first, while I was placing my equipment, I was trying to get anything I could, but I really just wasn't getting a lot of answers back. You know, I think a big part of communication is really trying to get on the level with or communicate with individuals. You know, for example, you have the slave house over this way. So I try to communicate with the slaves. I try to ask them relative questions. You know, what was it like working in the heat, picking somebody else's cotton in horrible conditions, or asking William Baynard about his house, or Captain Stoney, call him Captain Stoney, because I'm sure he got called Captain so many times in his life that it's just, you know, second nature to, to react and to say something. But, you know, you can't win them all. Well, this is interesting for a place with no electricity. Is somebody here with me? And just like that. Where'd you go? Who's here with me? What's your name? Is William Baynard here? I knew at this point I was on to something. I could definitely feel something close to me. How about Captain... Captain Jack. Captain Jack Stoney. Are you here with me? What happened next was one of the strangest things I've ever felt at any investigation. Oh, shit. Yeah, I can literally, it's like I can, it's like I literally just felt something, like, go into me. Notice right after that happened to me, my light shut off. The EMF wow. reader quit That's reading as soon as ridiculous. it happened. Here it is again. As soon as I felt it go into my chest, my EMF reader quit recording. Oh, shit. Yeah, I can literally, it's like... Once I left the park, I completely lost hearing in both of my ears and got nauseous. Oh, shit. And I'm pretty sure this is the yeah, cause of it. Literally, it's like I can, it's like I literally just, I hate to walk away from an area where things are happening, but uh, I literally felt like something like jumped into my chest and uh, it was weird. Um, that, that whole thing started before I even had the camera on. I try to turn on my full spectrum camera to take pictures and it made a sound it's never made before. It's like, it's like something manually just shut the lens closed and shut the whole thing off after I had just turned it on. And then I saw my EMF recorder losing its mind. And I just got this sense that just something was with me. And unfortunately that's mostly just a feeling, but the EMF recorder it doesn't make sense that it would go off at all, especially in this area. I mean, I put it next to the light. I put it next to a light socket, and it doesn't turn red like that. And there's no wires running through here. There's no lights. Obviously, there's no lights because it's starting to get a little dark out here. You know, so things like that. It's just one of those small things that's really insignificant unless you're standing here and facing it head on. Well, I ran into a raccoon. And, uh, well, he scared me right much, you know, because when you physically see things moving just a little bit in the dark, it's pretty terrifying. Um, I have another night here, so I'll probably slide back through in the evening hours tomorrow with a recharged ghost box and speaker and see if I can get a session going. Um... Maybe bring a friend. I'll tell you what. That whole episode I had with my camera shutting off and starting up my phone and the EMF reader going off the charts and that feeling I got of something just like literally going straight into my chest. 
I don't, I don't know, it was weird. I think that's about it for me for the night. Um, some strange stuff happened right as I left, or I guess once I got into my car. As soon as I shut my car door, I could barely hear it, and I got a heavy door, so it usually makes a loud slam, and it's like both my eardrums just weren't working, and there was pressure in there, and I immediately got sick, like, I felt like I had to throw up as soon as I got in my car, and I, I'd feel weak now and drained, and I don't know, I wonder if that has something to do with the feeling I had on my chest, like something went into me. That's definitely the weirdest, sickest feeling I've ever had doing this. So I'm back at the place where I had something enter my body yesterday and the EMF recorder went off and I placed my camera right where it happened and my battery drained immediately. It only went for about three minutes before it shut off. I started getting EMF readings again. So it just seems like Right here in the slave quarters, I keep having experiences. So I'm back. I was lighting up a little bit. I have my brother here. He's been taking pictures of me with my full spectrum camera. I was getting up into the red like I was yesterday, the same exact spot of where I felt whatever it was that entered me. Oh, I'm back in the red. Keep them coming. Now I did get a few interesting pictures here. As you can see above my head, there's a dark shadowy figure, and right next to it is an orb of light. Now in this photo, you can see that orb of light has traveled, and there's also that dark shadowy figure. Is that maybe the way the light is catching the tree? I'm not sure, but it is strange. And this one was the strangest of all. You can see right behind me, there's like a stream of mist, and that wasn't in any other picture. I mean, what the hell is that? And strange enough in this photo, you can see two orbs of light, and you can also see my EMF reader in the red at this point. Is it possible that those are the two spears that were near me? This photo is another one that kind of weirded me out. Now I'm almost positive that this is just the way the sunset was hitting the trees in the background. But if you look in the upper right corner of that window, it looks like there's a face. You can clearly see eyes and a nose in there. And that was definitely a little creepy. Here's two photos I also found interesting. You can clearly see two orbs of light coming from inside the structure. One thing's for sure, between having something enter my body and this clear mist behind me, this place has officially creeped me the hell out. Well, it's been a long while since my last video. Thank you guys for watching and please subscribe. Um, I do have other plans in the future and I hope you guys watch those as well.